Hello and welcome to one more episode with me, Samer. So this is one more thing I just gained access to that I want to showcase here. We would love to assist you in creating an AI agent for your business. May I have your name and the name of your business to get started? Also, if you could share a little about the requirements or the need you have in mind, that would be super helpful. So as you can see, I gained access to the real-time API OpenAI just rolled out. And what I wanted to do today is take you through what I've done, where I got the sources from, what I learned, and how I built this thing and get it to work. And with this, let's get started. Subscribe to Daddy's channel, The Mic. So on the 4th of October on Dev Day for OpenAI, they announced the introduction of the real-time API that you can see on the screen. So I'll, I'll leave a link for this page and you can go and read all about it. So for me, you know, I got excited by it. You can watch some of the videos here that just shows this in work and some people uh, with their interaction, I assume these are OpenAI people, um, maybe some of their partners. Um, and there's lots of interesting thing here. Um, one of them is uh, the um, availability and pricing. So it's not cheap, definitely not cheap. So I guarantee you the uh, process of me building this and then testing this to show you is going to cost me some money. I think currently this is not feasible for most businesses to use. Okay, so some something around safety and privacy. And the interesting part here is um, they're saying something around, oh, this is how you get started. So the play playground uh, has a feature I'll show you later. When when this went out, I checked my playground. It didn't show anything around this. Um, I even tried to build the project then. Didn't work because I didn't have the access to the API. I do have access now. And here also they mentioned that they worked with some partners um, to build components to really put this into production um, and for people to, to use it potentially. And one of them is Twilio. I know Twilio when it comes to SendGrid, which is one of their products. Um, I never used them when it comes to SMS or phone calls. I searched on YouTube at that time and I'll show you the video that helped me. There was one video by Twilio themselves showing you um, how they built this system and they are giving out the GitHub repository that you can use and replicate this on your own. So I've done that. I followed their instructions, built something, got it to work somehow with some modifications from my side, which will make it really interesting. As usual, you'd expect Zapier to come into this. And, you know, with this, I'm going to share with you uh, the link for that video, which will have the repository also link, which I can put also separately for you for easy access. And let's go just to the next phase of showing you that video, I will not run it, it's their video. And then I'll move in steps of, you know, what you need to look at when it comes to open AI documentation, and then what you need to do once you have access to their video on YouTube and the repository and how to take it to actually test it out and play with it if you want to do so. This is their video that I'm talking about. You can see this is the Twilio devs video. So they have a channel apparently, um, and it's called using open AI real time API to build a Twilio voice AI assistant with no JS. Okay. So if you go into the details of this video, you will find that repository and I'll put both links again in the description. The first thing you need to do after checking this out is going to the open AI documentation. For me, for the most part, I followed the code that Twilio did. I added some element that I will show you later. Now for you, you might want to add functions, add features, do something else with it. It is one of the more complex kind of uh, setups, even for the uh, OpenAI API that I've seen. So do that by all means. Uh, I would say, uh, based on my experience, run it based on the Twilio code. Just see it working and then start adding on top of that code blocks that does other things for you and keep testing along the way and until you have something that is working. Uh, again, be cautious because when you're testing, you're paying money for that API. And uh, as you've seen already, it is not cheap uh, whatsoever. So before I show you the documentation, let me show you the playground. So if you have, a, if you're an enterprise or a plus user, go to your playground. And if we go now to my playground, you should see this real time. So if you have this, which probably everyone has uh, in plus and enterprise users, that means that you have access to that um, API. So if you go and generate a new key, for example, to use in this project, 
you will have access to this API and all its related endpoints. And now if we go to the documentations, you will see uh, the usual things, but you'll see here the real time beta uh, documentation, which is having two folders, basically clients events and server events. And you can look at it, look at the endpoints. Um, you know, there's multiple of them uh, here. So you have to go through them again. My channel is all about no code. What I've done just to make sure if I add something, it doesn't miss everything else I've done. Um, I had something on cloud, Sonnet 3.5. I fed all of this text, basically copy paste uh, in there. And then I had a conversation. Okay, this is the code that I know is working. I want to add this, help me do it. And it helped me. And it definitely took me multiple runs to get it working. So I had lots of um, errors back and forth with Claude, but eventually I got it to work. If you're a more professional developer, I think this is easy business for you. So even if you get the help of AI or not, you can just go through the documentation and put this together and get it to work. So there's client events that you need to take care of. And then there's the server events also that you need to take care of. And uh, you know, there's lots of details here. Anyways, just know that you have all the details here if you want to do more with it or if you want to do it differently. But we have something ready to go from Twilio um, straight from their GitHub repository. OK, so now I will take you to Replit where I built this thing. Um, I will show you in, in general the code, how it works, how I understand it to work. Maybe there are better people to show you this, more professionals when it comes to development. And then we will go to Twilio. I'll show you how I set up Twilio to work. OK, so let's go to Replit. And here, once you get the repository, you're going to get lots of things with it. And, you know, the main part where all the code lives is index.js. When I've done it on Replit, I had some issues with uh, running the server. Again, not a coder. Probably that's something silly. Uh, but because when they show you on uh, Twilio, they show you on something running it on something like VS Code. So if you want to do it on VS Code, maybe it's better, it's easier because you just get the repository and just run it, add your touches and run it. So first one is the usual. You import all these libraries. Don't ask me about any of them. Just, you know, take my word for it. This is what it does, I think. Um, and then, you know, loading the, uh, the .env environment, which has the open API key, I assume. So here is the line that gets that key. And you can see it's in the .env file. And this is why they tell you, you need to create that .env file that you probably see here. If not, I'll make it bigger for you to see it. But I added a file called .env and then I added the key inside it. Then you initialize uh, Fastify. This is one of the libraries we've imported. I think this is something to get Twilio to work. I'm assuming here. Um, here you start doing some of the interesting things. So um, you have to define a system message. Basically, this is the main prompt to the assistant. And then you define um, a voice. So if we go back to the playground here, so you can see there are voices defined. So this is uh, Alloy and there, there's Echo and Shimmer. So you can select any of them uh, to use a different voice. And then you'll have to define a port. Now, when I got the code, it was 50-50, uh, I think. I had an issue. Uh, I, again, I sorted out with uh, AI in Replit to get the application to work. Um, but I ended up, don't ask me why, with 3000. It was one of the um, conversations I had with the AI model. And I have a port that basically connects this to the outer world um, for me to get a URL that I can use later on to connect this application into Twilio. So um, just follow the Twilio kind of instructions and code. You'll be good. And then you have the webhook URL. So this is the webhook that I will send data to um, for Zapier to pick up. So after the conversation is done, we take all the uh, exchange and we send it to Zapier. Zapier will take it and do other things with it. Now, this is not part of the original code. This is something that honestly, I had to see many others what they've done, learn from them, and then um, also explore uh, with Sonnet 3.5. So basically, I got it to work, but you need to have webhook URL defined early on. So later on, once the conversation is done, you can send the compilation uh, down to that webhook. And then we get session management and then list of event types to log to the console. Okay, I think this is some of uh, the events endpoints, basically open AI um, requirements that we need to log to eventually have the text available or for error handling. I'm not 100% sure, but I think 
based on what I read is just getting the details and the data that happens when interacting with the API from the open AI side. Okay, so then defining some kind of route, and then here we start to basically put in code um, to engage with Twilio, and you can see here uh, Fastify comes in again, and then there's the endpoint, so it's called incoming call, and again, the instructions are on the Twilio video as well, but this is important, the backslash incoming dash call. Um, so there's some code here, uh, the WebSocket uh, route to media stream. All of it is just to connect um, the OpenAI now to Twilio and get that stream, the audio stream coming. So eventually, to think about it, when someone calls or receives a call, there's a conversation happening. So that's happening through Twilio, which will connect to this application you see on the screen, and it will send some information to OpenAI that could be transcribed audio or audio itself. And then it, OpenAI will run some functions and return audio and text information to this application, which will record some of the text and then return the audio response back to the user. So everything is happening through Twilio. So this is just putting the pieces together for this to work. Okay, so now we go for the actual things where we open an event with OpenAI and then uh, listen for message from the OpenAI WebSocket, and then how to handle the connection, close um, and log a transcript. So that's where you correct that conversation, handle the WebSocket, close and errors, so error handling steps. And then this is the function where basically it prepares everything to send to Zapier, chat for Zapier um, transcript function. So it takes the transcript put it basically in an application that will send it through a webhook. It's a post probably kind of API call that will send the information, the transcript information summary, um, basically that we define here to um, Zapier for Zapier to pick up and do something else with. And then we have uh, the function that sends that data to Zapier automation. And then we have the main function to extract and send customer details. And just to tell you what the example I've done will be about. So I wanted the AI voice assistant to have a conversation potentially with a customer, collect their, their information like name, the business they represent, the business name, uh, email, phone, and then the requirement, what is the pain or the need they have. And then I can take that and record it and do, do something else with it. So that's the high level idea. And I made it for a hypothetical um, AI agent building type of service uh, company. You can call it an AI agency. So this is just for you um, to get the whole idea what I'm trying to achieve uh, through my example. The only thing you need to do now after getting the Twilio uh, repository the code, basically, you need, as I said, to add a .env file and put your OpenAI API key within that so you get it to work. So for us now, let's run this application and see what happens. And then we'll go to uh, Twilio and move there and see what we need to set up on the Twilio side before we test. So let's hit run. And this is what you need to get. You need to get this pretty print type of thing, message Twilio media stream server is running. Now, if you go to the console, you can see that the server is listening. Now, if we go back to the web view, it is very important to get the URL here. So now having that link, having the application running, we need to go to Twilio. So this is Twilio. And it was my first time when I wanted to build this based on what I've seen on Twilio side um, that I actually create an account. So you get some free credit within it. Um, probably you need to pay and get th certain things done and configured for you to use this application to make calls to your customers or users if you want to take this seriously. Now for testing purposes, um, again, I followed the Twilio instructions in their video. And what you need to do is basically go to the develop side here on the left pan. Uh, I think for the free account, you can only create a US number that you can call. So you click on it, you go to phone numbers, you go to manage, I think here where you create ones. And once you create a number, you will get active numbers. So if I click at my active numbers, I have a number here. And for safety reasons, I will hide this number. 
Um, so if you click at this number again, so once you create it and you click at it, you come to this page. And the only thing you need to do is you need to go down to the voice configuration and there's some webhook. So a call comes in. Basically, this is for an incoming call. So you put the URL that you got from Replit or from the browser if you ran this on VS Code or something like that. And this is my link I got from Replit. I will hide it. I, you know, if I don't run the application, probably nothing will happen. I just this is so expensive. I don't want to mess with it. But you can see at the end, this is what I will show you. At the end of the link, you can see here replet.dev, which probably if you do it on replet, this is the end of your link as well. If you do it on VS Code, probably it will be different. But I just want to show you the backslash incoming call and everything else I didn't touch. And then you have to go down to the bottom and hit save configurations. Once you save configuration, you have everything set up. And again, because I'm using a free Twilio account, this is how I'm doing it. So I'm calling the number rather than the number uh, calling my mobile. I think they have, if you have a paid account, even they have a tool to help you demo. You'll see that in their video where you can actually put in a number and call that number and automatically the agent will start speaking to it. So basically in the future, you can have leads that collect information from your customers like their mobile or phone numbers. And then you can create an automation where that gets Twilio to call them running this application that we have now on Replit and the agent will start interacting with your customer in a certain way. Now, again, the other thing I didn't figure out or find anyone talking about um, is in the future or now, can someone build uh, a RAG kind of capability of this uh, agent or assistant? So, for example, can I load my application on Replit with a document and where I have information about my business, about my products, maybe or services where, you know, if the user is asking information to the AI assistant, the voice assistant, the voice assistant can answer back with uh, really accurate information about my business. I didn't play with that because I handled enough errors for me to do this demo. But I think it will be interesting for, you know, to see others doing it maybe. And I'll try to do my own uh, if I have the time. But definitely that will take this capability to the next level. Okay, one last thing before I go to the test. Uh, let me show you what I've done on the Zapier side. So in Zapier, I created this very basic, very simple Zap. And it's a catch hook uh, trigger. So basically when I get a dump of information from that application after the call is done, I catch it here in Zapier and then I take the information, the business they represent, the business name, I want the name of the individual um, I, I'm calling or the assistant is calling. I want to get their email, their phone, and then what are they looking for? What's their requirement? So that will come in a JSON format uh, into this webhook. I'll take it and then I'll place it in an air table. So I did one test, one successful test before I recorded this video. And you can see here I have the uh, details generated. Um, so we'll test it live. We'll see what we collect, what we get here on the screen. So I'm going to keep this screen up to see this whole thing work end to end from starting a conversation, closing the line and see all of that information collected and basically digested in this sheet that we see on Airtable. Okay, so I'm going to start with the call now. I'm going to call the number I got from the Twilio um, account. Um, I will connect to the application basically. So I have a conversation with that assistant. Now the application is running on Replit, so that should work. And then we'll have a conversation. In theory, once I close, I will get that information back into my application. My application will send that information to Zapier and we'll see it here on the screen. So here goes nothing. Hi, you have called Bart's Automotive Center. How can we help? Hello, thank you for calling. How can I help you today? Well, um, I've seen that you do um, AI agents and I want to build an AI agent for my business. That's fantastic to hear. We would love to assist you in creating an AI agent for your business. May I have your name and the name of your business to get started? Also, if you could share a little about the requirements or the need you have in mind, that would be super helpful. Well, my name is Samer, S-A-M-E-R, and um, my business name is Give Me The Mic. Uh, and, you know, what we do is we help our suppliers um, or our customers basically get uh, contacts with potential customers. So we're just a platform that connects suppliers with customers. And, you know, I want to have an AI agent and the bot that can work with our customers in general, give them information, budgetary rates around our prices, 
um, just as an idea and uh, just basically promote our business. Thank you for sharing that. Samer, great to know more about Give Me the Money and what you're aiming to achieve with an AI agent. It sounds like you're looking for a versatile AI agent that can interact with your customer, provide information on pricing, and promote your platform effectively. Oh, by the way... Can you also provide your contact information, such as an email or phone number, so we can reach out to you with more detail. Okay. And do you have a preferred timeline for when you'd like this AI agent to be up and running? Of course, go ahead. What else would you like to discuss? So um, my information is, uh, my email is info, I-N-F-O, at givemethemic.com. So give me G-I-V-E-T-H-E-M-I-C.com. And my phone number is 00971-555-5555. And, you know, I want to implement that in a month, tops. You there? Thank you, Samer. I've noted down your email info at givemethemoney.com. And your phone number is 00971. So I'll just just go ahead and close this now. So looking at the screen now, we should get the information that we've collected and we have it there. So as you see, it worked. Now, you know, it's not perfect. So it had like some at some moment it stopped for a while and it was like awkward silence. Um, and also when I try to cut it similar to what you do on a, at least today, the voice assistant on open AI app, it didn't really react well. Now this is understandable. Number one, this is better. And number two, there's an application and Twilio in between. So it will have latency today, but I think with time they will perfect it. Now, the other thing also I noticed it didn't transcribe things well. And, uh, you know, even when I just gave it my name, I had to spell it out because if you see here in the first test, I said Samer, which is my name. It got it as Tamer and even without an E. Um, so I had to spell out my name here. But when I gave it my uh, email, which is info, it gave me the mic. You can see it didn't really also uh, pick it up there. So still that's a challenge, I think, uh, when it comes to language and slang uh, or delicate when people are speaking to it. But also, I think this is something that with time, it will be easily solved with, again, AI picking up on these different uh, the tones of voice and slangs and trying to read it more. And maybe the agent would actually ask you the question again um, to, to make sure that it got everything right. And to be fair, um, if I carry on with the conversation, I didn't want to, you know, pay uh, three, four dollars just to, to do the test. But sometimes it will reiterate um, what what you said just to make sure it got it right um, the number uh, it was very easy it got it right so let's see what it picked out of the requirements that I discussed with uh, with it on the phone so if we double click here I'll just open it in full screen Samer wants an AI agent and bot that can interact with customers provide information offer budgetary rates and pricing and help in promoting the business he aims to implement this solution within a month so you can see it got the gist of what i discussed with the assistant and now we have it here so the application is working and i think it has huge potential so with time it's going to get cheaper it's going to get better and much more use cases will come through it like as of today I think this is better than these clunky agents, voice agents that we see, especially with calling banks. I don't know why banks love them. And I think this can perform better once it's in its production, not the beta type of version. And the potential of such technology is huge, especially I think, I believe, maybe I'm wrong, for small businesses who want to have a world-class type of call center maybe, or a lead collection a call center. It can be AI run um, at a low cost when that happens for them to interact with potential customers, qualify them and do that again, limited cost, high quality, something comparable to the big giants in the market, keep their customers happy and engaged and, you know, grow uh, without having to, you know, hire uh, and pay for big call centers and manage that. And it goes without saying that even big businesses are gonna jump on such technology because they can scale better. They can have that assistant talk specific points with their customers, collect information in a smooth, native to humans, interactive manner. I think this will get better. Today, maybe if you watched the demo, 
you probably will hang up on the assistant when it calls you if that happens in real life but i think in no time it's going to be so smooth so good that it will be a game changer already there are some third-party companies doing that basically deploying that ai voice element of automation um, you can look it up on youtube i, I i've seen many videos uh, by creators uh, on that so it's there but now it's coming through open ai it's coming through this big player in the ai domain so i hope you enjoyed the video i'm gonna keep all the links in the description please do not forget to like subscribe and share the video if you think others will benefit from it and if you want to make me happy just write me a comment in the comment section it's been a wild ride for this channel so i'm very close to a thousand subscription and yeah i wish this one uh, is the one that will tip me over that a number that I've been working for two years towards. Thank you very much for watching. If you are not a subscriber, consider that. If you are a subscriber, I really appreciate you. And with this, thank you and goodbye. Subscribe to Daddy's channel. Give me the mic.